Welcome to Interview Probe. Today we are going to learn about higher order components in JavaScript. This is one of the most important JavaScript questions. So by the end of this video, you'll get to know the basics of higher order components, how to build them with a use case, and what are the inbuilt higher order functions provided by JavaScript. Let's get started. So what is higher order function? By definition, it is a function that returns a function or takes other functions as argument. Okay, but what does it mean? So let's see this with examples. I have a requirement where I receive the stream of data that represents the side of a square. So let me create an array of sides of squares. So I will name this array as sides and we'll have some dummy values here. And my requirement is I need to calculate the area of each of these squares. So first, let's write the function that calculates the area of a square. And I am going to use function expressions here. So let's create a variable area. And this is going to be a function which accepts the side and returns the area of this uh, square with this side. So it is nothing but side into side. Okay, now we have the function that returns area for the given side of a square. We need to repeat the same for all these uh, sides in this array, correct? So let's write another function which performs this operation repeatedly on this array. So let me call this function as calculate areas. This function is going to accept an array. So what this function is expected to do? It is expected to return the areas, array which contains the areas for each of this side. So we need a new array. Result is empty array initially. And let's uh, loop through each of these sides. Sides dot length i plus plus. Uh, now we have to push the area. So first, what is the function that gets us the area? It is area, which accepts the side. Now current side is sides of i. And we need to push this result into the result array. So result dot push of area for the current side. And finally, we are going to return the result. Uh, let's see if this function is uh, working correctly. Calculate areas and this accepts the sites array. Let me run this. So for the site 10, area is 100. 20, 400, 30, 900, 40, 1600. So our function is working as expected. This is looking good. After few days, I got another requirement that I need to find the diagonals of the given square. So what I will do, I will create another function called diagonal. And this function is going to accept this side. And using this side, we are going to return the diagonal. The, sorry, this should be return keyword. And the formula to calculate diagonal is side into square root of 2. So side multiplied by, we have sqrt2 in the math library. So this is going to be the result of the diagonal. And we are going to repeat the same for all the elements inside the sides array. Let's just copy the same and make the modifications. So this is going to be calculate diagonals. And this is also going to take the complete sides array. But uh, here, instead of using area, we are going to use the diagonal function, which accepts the side of the square. And let's just uh, see if this is working fine. Here, instead of calculate areas, let's print calculate diagonals. Run it. So the first output is for areas and the second output is for diagonals. So our code is working fine. 
Now, after few days, I got another requirement, which is I need to calculate the circumference of the square for the given sides array. So what are we going to do now? We'll create another function that performs the, that returns the circumference of the square. So I will create another function circumference. This is going to accept side and the formula to calculate circumference is 4 into side. And uh, similarly, we are going to repeat this operation for each and every item in the sides array. So I'm going to rename this to calculate circumference. This is going to accept sides. Now, instead of diagonals, it is going to accept circumference function. Let's try to print this. And let me run it. Now this is the circumference for this side 10, the circumference is 40. For the square with side 20, the circumference is 80. This is all looking good, but just look at this code. Here I have some empty array. I am going through, I am looping through some array which is given here and uh, this is going to return the result. The same thing is happening here in this calculate diagonals and the calculate circumference. The only difference here is this function. For calculate areas, we use calculate, uh, we use the function area. And for diagonals, we have another function called diagonal. And for circumference, we have another function called circumference. So uh, these methods are fine because their own only objective is to use some formula and return it. Right. So these methods, uh, we don't have any problem with these methods, but we are, we need to make these three functions generic so that we don't repeat the same code again and again. So let's try to generalize all these three functions into one single function. So let me uh, for now just copy paste the same thing. I'm going to change the uh, name. I'll just call it uh, calc and uh, this is going to take a uh, sites array and we have the result uh, array which is empty and this is going to loop through the sites array but I want to make this part of this code generic. So what I will do is instead of calling a specific function here, I will accept another parameter called operation. So this operation parameter is going to be a function and I am going to use that function. I'm going to call this function here and this function is going to take side of i which means current element in the loop. So this is good. Now how to use this function? I'll take this calculate circumference. So let's try to calculate the circumferences but this time instead of using calculate circumferences I'm going to use the calc function calc and this is going to take sides now the difference is this is going to accept another parameter which is the function so to calculate circumference what is my function circumference so let's just copy this variable here now uh, let's uh, comment this for now other console logs just to see uh, if our code is working or not so let me run this now uh, the previous function and our newly written generic function are returning the same output so let's see if we can reuse this function for the other two as well let me just copy paste this again so first i want area then I want diagonal and then circumference. Let me just comment it out. And I'll comment these previously written functions as well. Hmm. 
this is commented and let me comment this as well and this one so let's run it now all three outputs are going to come from the newly written generic method so we have the same output which we have seen using this commented code now let me just remove it uh, to see the entire code in one place i'm removing all the comments look at how simple our code is we have individual functions whose only responsibility is use a specific formula and return the output and we have a generic function which makes use of these three functions uh, dynamically so if i want to calculate area i just pass area function if it's diagonal i just pass diagonal and if it's circumference i'll just pass circumference and not only for side of a square uh, for example in future you want to make use of the same function with the radius of a circle as well so let's create a radius this is also going to be an array of which contains radius of multiple circles so i'll just make it simple so it's one two three four five and we need to calculate the area of a circle so i will write another function called area of a circle which takes the radius as input and calculates area of a function and area of a circle and the formula for it is pi r square so math dot pi into r into r so we have pi r square here now let's use the same calc function this time it is going to accept radius array and the function is going to be area of circle so let's run it now this is the area of each of the circles represented by, uh, with the radiuses coming from this radius array so this way we can avoid code repetition thus satisfying the dry principle of functional programming so what is a dry principle it stands for don't repeat yourself so using higher order functions we can reuse the same code without repeating it multiple times uh, let's take one more example where a function returns another function so far we have seen a function which takes function as a parameter but let's see another examples with a function that returns another function so let me just uh, remove all these console logs so in this example i am going to take a fun create a function which takes a parameter uh, x and returns a function that will take another parameter y and uh, so first let me write some code here i will name this function as step so this is a function which takes uh, x as a input and it returns another function which takes y as a input and the function which it is going to return uh, should do some uh, calculation so that calculation is it would add these two uh, parameters the one from outer function and the one from inner function i am going to consume this function now so i will create another function expression called incrementer this is going to call this uh, step and uh, what is the amount that i want to increment it is 1 so every time i call this function it will increment the value by 1 similarly i will create another function called decrementer this is going to take the step value of minus 1 so we are going to decrement decrement the value passed to the decrementer function by 1 so let's put some console logs now i will call this incrementer function and i will pass some value say 10 what will happen now is 
incrementer will pass this value to uh, the function returned by step of 1. So step of 1 means uh, this is the function and the value of x will be 1 and when we call this function it would return the inner function. So to this inner function we are passing the value 10 and once this function is called what will happen is it will add 10 and 1. So the output will be 11. Similarly let me call decrementer as well. Uh, here also I will pass the value 10. So what is happening now? Decrementer is a function which takes minus 1 for the value for the parameter x and returns this function. Now I am calling that function by passing a value 10 to parameter y. So what happens with this is x value will be minus 1, y will be 10 and finally it will return a value minus 1 plus 10 which is 9. Let's run and see the output. Okay, this should be just uh, log, not uh, logs. So for the incrementer, we got uh, 10 and decrementer, we got 9. So this was, this is another example of a higher order function, which is returning a function. So let's see another example of a higher order function, which returns function. Uh, this time I want a function that will display the amount along with the currency. So let's create another uh, constant called currency converter or uh, let's just say currency formatter. It's going to be a function which accepts the currency symbol and it will return another function which would append this currency symbol with a value. And that function, I am going to use an arrow function now. So this function will accept a value and it will return currency appended with value. Uh, let's just uh, give some space between the symbol and the value. Now let's see if this how this uh, function is going to return the value. So I will call this currency formatter and my first argument uh, which is the currency symbol is going to be a dollar. Now this will return me a function which will accept some value. So I can either store this in a variable and then call it or I can simply uh, make uh, two calls like this. So let's just say 100 and let me copy paste the same thing here instead of dollar I'll put INR and let's say it is 120 rupees so let's run it we have our uh, value appended with the symbol dollar and uh, 120 is appended with INR so these are the two ways how you can uh, make use of higher order functions that return another function. Well, this is how you can build a custom higher order function. There are a number of uh, inbuilt uh, functions also, higher order functions also provided by JavaScript, which you might be using in your day-to-day -day coding unknowingly. Let's take a step back and uh, look at this uh, calculate function. What are we doing here? We have an empty array and we loop through the existing array, perform some operation and return the new array, right? Can we do the same thing with a built-in function provided by JavaScript? I can simply say sites.map and for each side, I can call operation, uh, instead of operation, it is going to be area of site. And let's see what the output will be. Console log. Okay, so let's run it. Now we see the 
areas for each of the side. So map is one of the higher order function provided by JavaScript. There are other functions also. So we have uh, filter, reduce, for each, slice, uh, uh, set timeout and many other higher order functions. This is all about higher order functions in JavaScript. I hope the concept is clear. Please subscribe to Interview Pro and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.